Hey guys, it's Chala, your local edgy art man. Today I look like I'm about to steal your lunch money and today I'm recording my first ever tutorial. So if you guys have been watching my recent videos, you may have noticed that I've been using this method a lot to create dramatic lighting in my scenes. Some people have said that it looks very simple and effective and they wanted to know more about it. Yeah, usually my paintings are heavily driven by lighting. So I've settled on this technique that breaks lighting down into multiple passes with a different lighting elements. So I thought I'd break those steps down for you guys, do a little sh demonstration shot and explain my thought process. So what you will need to follow this tutorial is a painting program that has layers and blending modes. And you also need to be able to think about your character or your subject as a three dimensional object. You need to understand which side the planes are facing. And I need to be a master at it, of course. Any any level of skill will do. But yeah, some of these concepts are pretty complex, so I won't have time to do like detailed breakdowns of them, but I will link to further learning resources where I can. You can use this method to present different options to your clients. You can change colors of basically anything in your scene, and uh, you can give your client an illusion that they have a choice. You can make them choose between options. You can either use it as a base for a painting by merging the layers together later when you're done and then painting on top of that or you can just call it a finished piece it's really up to you and the type of look you're going for just for disclosure i will be using a reference for this piece that i will be painting which is you can see over here it's from a reference back by graphic studio that i bought yeah let's get into it <laughs> I usually first create a mask by either coloring in the sketch by hand or by selecting the background with the magic wand tool and inverting the selection. Then I create a new layer for every part of the subject that has a different color. These layers will be clipped to the original mask we just made. It's useful to segregate the layers like this if you want them to be editable. Just remember to rename them so you don't get lost in them. If you don't think you'll need that though, you can just color the mask layer directly. But I would recommend to keep the layers separated if you want the shading process to be easier in some areas and if you want to add like patterns on top of clothing or something. Create a new layer with the darkening blending mode of your choice. Clip this layer to the colors folder. Now this will become the key light of our image. We're going to use a similar color to the background of the scene for this layer. And now our initial colors will actually become the lit area. I prefer to start by erasing parts of the layer in areas that the light will be hitting, as opposed to painting in the actual shadows, but it can be done both ways. I recommend at least trying the first option though, because I find that it trains your ability to think with light a little bit more efficiently. It might help to temporarily hide the colors while shading and just focus on the values. This helps you think of the subject as like a sculpture, I suppose. It's kind of similar to the grayscale to color workflow, except we're not committing to it as hard. Furthermore, it might help to make the first mark zoomed out so you get a nice overview of where the large shapes go and then zoom in and detail it further. The softness level of the edges will depend on what your light source is like. Big light sources like studio lights or windows will create shadows with smooth edges which create a more appealing look. Whereas single directional and smaller lights will create harsher shadows with sharper edges. We're using like a studio lighting setup in this shot, hence why the transitions between shadow and light are kinda soft. This step is crucial to achieve a believable 3D look to your art. It is also known as contact shadows or occlusion shadows. It appears in enclosed areas, such as the backside of the fur pelt of the character, the underside of the torso armor, the area under the jaw, clothing folds, and areas where the feet touch the ground. All right, so I wanted to pause for a moment to show you guys some useful shortcuts that will come in very handy when doing shading and especially occlusion. Since we colored all the layers separately, we can make our life easier when doing occlusion shadows by adding certain parts to selection by holding control and clicking on the layer icon here. 
And then I can just easily paint in some shadows, for example, under here like this on this piece without touching the other layers. Pretty nifty. So sometimes we have situations where some fills are behind others. For example, I have the pants here behind the armor, right? So I want to take the armor out of the selection and I can do that by holding control and alt clicking on those layers that I want to remove. Let's also remove that belt. Perfect. Now we have just that lower area here that we can shade. So this will just add a little touch of cleanliness to your shading. You could do it without the selections, but this will just make it cleaner. And then if you want to intersect, you can hold Control, Shift and Alt at the same time to intersect the selection like this. This will, this is rarely useful, but sometimes you need to use it. So I thought I'd include that as well. All right, back to the video. If you struggle to understand how occlusion shadows work, check out this video by Marco Bucci, which breaks it down very efficiently in 10 minutes. It's a very valuable thing to know. So here you can see me just experiment with the colors a little bit because this technique allows you to do it. You can make your secondary light any color and come from any angle, but as a rule of thumbs it should not overlap your key light, but rather fill in some shadows that were created by it. I'm going for a standard backlight coming in from behind the character from the bottom left side. The reason rim lighting usually works so well is because it highlights the silhouette of the character in a very high contrast manner because the more extreme of an angle the light is, the more intense it will appear. Keep in mind though that you don't necessarily need to use a rim light. You can make your secondary light come from any angle or you don't need to use one at all didn't like the purple is actually so I decided to change it back. <laughs> highlights are a great way to define form in the lit areas. I'm calling them highlights for the video but really they are just reflections of the surroundings. Basically a compressed image of the surroundings will appear on your surfaces and typically only things that are brighter than your surface will appear as a reflection. The look of the reflections will depend on the type of surface that is doing the reflecting. In this case, it will be quite strong since it's a metal surface. However, on materials like cloth and skin, it will be much more blurred and soft. This step might be quite difficult to get right at first because you really need to understand the volume of the surfaces you're painting. I've actually done a tutorial on how to go about the placement of the highlights. So check it out through the card I've linked if you're interested. To take it a step further, I'm adding in some reflections of the surrounding color into the shadow areas. And as I said, it's going into the shadow because that area is darker than the background. The terminator is the transition line between light and shadow. Keep in mind that it only appears when the light is direct enough. It won't appear in the case of an ambient light situation. I should have probably done this step right after doing the key light. It's just easier that way, but it doesn't really matter. It's basically like doing cell shading on top of your regular shading in a way. It's just where the line would go. Although you don't necessarily need to paint the Terminator, it helps solidify the key light in your scene. While the highlights are doing the heavy lifting in this particular piece, usually things might start looking a little bit flat in fully lit areas. It is useful to add some volume to them by thinking about the angle at which the light hits the surface, which is where half tones come to play. I'm darkening the key light layer slightly in areas that are more tilted away from the light source. A potential downside to this workflow is that you might start being more indecisive with your color choices and stuff because I tried to change these colors to something more cool looking throughout this process many times. I just ended up going back to my orig original one but maybe that was the reassurance that I needed or something. Now this is already exclusive to this piece and pieces with armor and metal in general but a, like a nice trick you can do to make things look more grungy and real is to just erase small parts of your highlights to make it look like they're kind of worn. And you can also add little highlighted areas. These small scratches are catching the light from above.
To finalize things, I just merged all the layers together and I'm now painting on top of all of that. You don't actually need to even merge all of them, you can just make a new layer on normal mode and just pick colors from the whole image below it. You can keep going as long as you want from this point on, it's up to you. I decided to keep it short in this piece because I didn't plan to make it like a very big one. Alright, that was cool, wasn't it? I hope you guys learned something new today. Obviously, you don't need to use this as like a step-by-step -step guide. You, need, you don't need to replicate every step of the way perfectly like I did. I just hope that you learn something that will go in your arsenal of knowledge in your brain and you will be able to pull this, these things out sometimes when you need them. You can change these things around to fit your artistic vision. You can use these layers in cel-shaded styles also if you want to. That's This is possible. I have done it in the past, but, 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 but yeah, yeah, I was gonna do like an outdoor shot also in this video, but then I realized I don't have enough time and I also need to research these this technique a little bit more and experiment a little bit more to be able to bring you guys a solid outdoor lighting tutorial because this was very indoor, very mechanical lighting or something, I don't know. But yeah, I will probably be doing more tutorials in the future if this is well received. You can download the PST file with all the layers and everything editable through the description of this video where you'll, where you'll find my Patreon page. When you sign up, you'll be able to get access to all my PST files and my Discord community, which is growing slowly but surely. We're looking for more people to join our secret community of Chuggaland. That's what it's called. I still regret naming it that, but I'm keeping it. I'm going to record a new drawing or comments soon, and this is happens through the Discord now, and a little bit through YouTube comments, but mostly through Discord. We have a bunch of more cool stuff going on over there, so hop on over to my Patreon to sign up. Yeah, that's basically it. See you guys in the next video. See you guys soon, very soon. All right, peace, y'all. I'm out.